These are poppy seed capsules, and I picked them from the garden when the poppies finished flowering last season, before those little tiny openings happened because you don't want the seeds to be released. Nice and dry, that's when you pick them, put them into a bag, a paper bag or an envelope, and you find that those little capsules just let out all of the seeds, and there are hundreds in there. Now, those seeds don't need to be sown into a tray or into a punnet. You can sow them directly into the ground where they'll flower. And the thing is that they're not fussy about soil types. They don't like a rich, well-composted soil, no fertiliser at all, and they like the ground to be a bit disturbed, so give it a good rake over. I'm sowing Papava rheus, which is commonly called Papava poppy, and rheus is the Greek word for red. So they're the true Flanders poppies, red petals with a black dot in the middle. And they can self-seed very readily, so do watch if you're near bushland area, just be a little careful of them. Now just sprinkle the seeds in. There's no need to rake them over or spread soil on the top of them. Just make sure that you put some water on and keep that up regularly so they germinate quite easily. When you plant the poppy seeds depends on where you live in Australia. Here in temperate parts like Melbourne, you'd sow them in autumn and then you'd expect a riot of colour from spring into early summer. So if you get a chance, why not plant some poppies for remembrance? I'm learning how to knit a poppy and I'm learning from experts. And then you start to decrease and it's the decrease that gets you that nice little sort of curl, well, yeah. that curl in the flower. Oh, I see. It's gorgeous. Lynn Berry and Margaret Knight <laughs> describe themselves as fibre artists. Over the last 10 years, they've knitted, crocheted and sewed together many art installations. We've known each other since we were teenagers because I actually got together with Lynn's brother and we end up getting married. Um, we subsequently did divorce, but um, I kept the sister-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> so I was the, you know, I was the divorce settlement. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> Fibre art has become really popular, hasn't it? Well, yes, it, it has, and I think that part of the reason for that is that it's become more fun. Mm. Like yarn bombing, for instance. Love yeah. yarn bombing. Yes. That's, I love it when you see it. gives you a surprise. Yes, you know. it does. And it's that's wonderful. that's kind of what it's designed to do. Yarn bombing's meant to just sort of brighten your day, yeah, basically. Exactly. Yeah. So you see a little bit so of yarn. So have you done any yarn bombing? Oh, yes. We've done <laughs> quite a bit of yarn Ah, tell me more yes. then. Yes. <laughs> There's a huge fun element to this. Yes. And there's almost a bit of one-upmanship, really. <laughs> Look what I made. <laughs> so what else have you done, yarn bombing-wise? Well, we did that daffodil yarn bomb at Peter McCallum Hospital we in did. 2012. Yeah. That was really the precursor to what we're doing now. How come? So we made uh, 120 daffodils. Three of our parents died of cancer. Yep. So it was a small tribute to them on Daffodil Day, oh, 2012. Hello. 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 How are you? Good morning, everybody. And so we decided to make poppies in honour of our fathers who both fought in World War II. So we decided that we would make 120 poppies. And that's and basically. Them on the 11th of November yeah. 2013. 13. Yeah, at the shrine. And then the, it was the interview, wasn't it? Yeah. On Radio yeah. National. I had no idea how many people uh, listened to Radio yeah, National. <laughs> so it really did it explode. It blew up. People were sending in two, then fives, then tens. Lynn and Margaret call their growing network of poppy makers 5,000 poppies because that's how many they wanted for their Gallipoli Centenary installation at Federation Square in Melbourne, 2015. And we thought that we'd be able to get 5,000 poppies without too many problems. <laughs> but Lynn and Margaret underestimated how moved people were by the poppy idea. Then we started getting them in hundreds and then thousands. Oh, so they were just rolling in at a rate of knots. In the end, Lynn and Margaret had over a quarter of a million poppies to install. Federation Square was kind of the defining moment. And then when we moved those poppies from Fed Square down onto Princess Bridge and the marches that year marched through it, it was the culmination of everything yes. that we'd been working towards. It was just amazing. 
You've had people from all around, everywhere, Australia and even internationally, Absolutely. sending poppies in. Uh, just in the last couple of weeks, Canada, Croatia, the US, the UK, Malaysia. We've had some from Turkey too, haven't we? Yes, oh, we've had a lot fantastic. of poppies. Actually, yeah. the Turkish got on board very early in the piece, so we had a lot of poppies come from Turkey. Next came an invitation to the famous Chelsea Flower Show. Chelsea was an amazing thing in terms of the size of it. I don't think any of us were really ready for the impact of it. We actually had a lot of television and film celebrities, but we also had all the royals. They were really quite taken with yeah. it. We actually got to chat with Harry and Will <laughs> and Kate. And then, you know, to top it all off, we got to actually talk to the Queen we too. The Queen. It's wonderful. Mm. It was amazing. 100-year anniversaries of First World War events kept coming, and so did poppy installations by Lynn and Margaret. When we were in Fromel in 2016, it was unbelievable, wasn't it? It oh, was spectacular yeah. and very moving, and we felt really, really privileged to be there. So every poppy has a story. There's a lot of different ones that have been made by people from all over the world. This one's from the Tatters Guild in Victoria. It's probably taken hours to make and it's the tiniest, most gorgeous, intricate poppy. This one here, it's quite a simple design. It's just three layers of felt that somebody's cut out and then they've made it special by the way they've finished it off. They've put a, a green button in the centre and they would be able to recognise it as their creation. And this one is a knitted poppy. It's actually got some embroidered uh, French knots in the centre and then it's pretty heavily beaded. It's absolutely beautiful. We've encouraged people to dedicate the poppies they make to whoever they choose to. In memory of my grandfather, Herbert William Berman, who was sent ashore at Gallipoli on the 25th of April, 1915, and who returned to Australia as a very troubled man. He lived with the effects of what he saw and did and heard for the rest of his life. To all those who suffer in war, not only those in the front line, but those who nurse and care for them, and for those who are suffering afterwards. My father was imprisoned in Changi, and my mother and two brothers and I felt deeply the impact it had on him. I could never cope with it all until recent years. Knitting these poppies along with friends from church and our seniors group has brought healing, lest we forget. Since Lynn and Margaret began their poppy journey, they've been joined by many others and a lot of poppies have been made. Close to half a million now. And every single one of them's used? We work very hard to use every wow. single poppy. Hmm. Like, what's the most significant thing you've remembered about the journey? Apart from the tribute itself, which is just an amazing labour of love by many thousands of people, I think the wonderful generosity of people. Yeah. And I'm grateful for that. <laughs> <laughs>